everyone. Everyone, make sure you mute. Evening, everybody. Mr. Walkden here. Uh, I was a very proud head teacher of the school. Thank you for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, hopefully, you're going to get loads and loads of information during the course of the next hour or so. We've got loads of people here tonight lined up for you from heads of department, from science, from maths and English and careers. Mr. Wilson is also here, the uh, the uh, pastoral leader for uh, Year 11. So. Great start for you tonight, just to be here, guys. Get used to them faces. Hopefully, you're going to learn loads of stuff tonight. The session is being recorded, so you can see it at your own leisure time after the event. Um, the idea of tonight is that you put the uh, the names to faces. You get the exam updates. There'll be some information about the qualifications, and we'll just sign posture for the for the road ahead. 
over the course of the next sort of 10 months, which sounds like a long time, but as we know, of course, it isn't. Um, the Yellens have come back in in the last uh, three weeks and made a fantastic start. I think they realised that obviously this is now the uh, business end. And, you know, it seems like two minutes ago since they were in year seven and eight, and all of a sudden they're here now. So hopefully tonight will be a chance for you to ask some questions. There's a chat box facility there. There's key staff here. And hopefully at the end of tonight, all your questions will be answered. Uh, and if not, you know the lines of communication through the departments, through the pastoral team, through the form tutors. So thank you for tuning in tonight. Hopefully it'll be really rewarding for you. Have a really good evening and get those questions answered. Thank you. I hand you over now to Miss Johnson. Hi everybody, um, sorry about the technical issues at the start. Uh, we have got a video we want to play you, but we will play it um, afterwards at the end of the event. Um, I am now going to share some information with you through some slides. I'm hoping the slides you can see in front of you. I'm looking over our, our IT technician. Is that correct, sir? Brilliant, thank you. Um, I am, then we've just got to work out how we press play on this. Um, like um, uh, Miss Wharton said, if there's any questions, please just use the chat box. Um, if we think we've missed anything, just let us know. Or if you want some more information on anything, we are hanging around at the end of it, um, of this event, so, to answer any questions that you may have. Um, okay, so am I right to mute myself, sir? Brilliant. So um, in this key stage for information, even in my, it's my small section, which will take roughly uh, about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ATL grades um, and the welcome back. I'm going to talk to you about the GC, GCSE exams and the importance of mocks. I'm going to talk to you about some of the basics and making sure that our students get those right. I'm going to talk to you about guidance on how to support your child, including strategies for a home and revision strategies to prepare for school and external exams. And I'm also going to talk to you um, about general communication and uh, support at school. So to start us off, um, I shared these slides with our Year 11 students in their first assembly back, and there's three key messages here really um, that I wanted to get across to our students. Um, the first one is that a year from now, um, it, the first one says a year from now, you will wish you had started today. And the point I'm trying to make here is that the earlier we start, the better. Uh, every year we always have students who on results day or when they finish school, they always say, I wish I had done this earlier or I wish I had started doing this earlier. So the earlier that we can get into good habits and the earlier that we can get going with with our year 11, with our revision, with our positive attitude, positive mindset, um, the better it will be and the less chance there is of that happening at the end of year 11. However, having said that, um, we know that success doesn't come from just occasional um, occasional bits of you know hard work and occasional bits of that it's a it's a consistent thing so we really need we really try and want to encourage our young people to be doing things regularly um, not everybody's perfect there's always going to be small you know blips and bad days and things like that however it's about rewarding consistent hard work over a long period of time and having those long-term goals in our heads and then finally um, it's don't be upset with the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. And I think that's really important here that we we need to encourage our young people to work towards achieving something. And, and if, they, if they didn't put uh, time in or they didn't work in, you know, last year and they're reflecting on that, what's important is that they realise that that's because they didn't do something to prepare themselves for it. So it's all about that preparation. It's all about um, doing things consistently and starting as soon as we can to get ourselves ready um, to, to head towards the end of year 11. OK, so um, you you have seen our uh, um, new attitude to learning and all I've done is I've um, highlighted just a few uh, skills on here that I think are fundamental for our year 11s and that I am going to promote as much as possible and hope they can show um, during the course of this year. So things like resilience um, and determination are going to be key in this year. Um, it is going to get tough at times. There's going to be a lot of stress and, and worry uh, for some of our students. And it's important that we promote this resilience and determination, that they don't give up, that they give everything their best shot. Um, and that will always give them the chance of um, doing as well as they can. 
the other ones I want to touch on are being proactive, self-disciplined, organized. Um, organization in terms of revision and our day-to-day -day life for our young people is so important and you can see that students who come in and are organized do better um, just day-to-day -day, but also in their final examinations. You can see as well that we're also encouraging um, our students to be proactive and self-disciplined. So making choices on their own to revise, uh, to get work done, um, to you know, there might be some sacrifices that have to be made this year. Um, and it's about doing that and seeking the opportunities, being proactive, attending uh, revision sessions, P6s, going out of their way to speak to their teachers to see how they can improve. And um, students who do that as they're moving up that developing scale, we are after all developing our young people you know they're not finished products but if they work on these skills and they develop them they ultimately will perform better um, and they'll leave here with as many opportunities as uh, as many, you know a broad range of opportunities available to them which is what we want okay so i've shown this to our students as well so this is a reminder for the students and just um just a bit of a mindset really that um, I, i'd like to share with um, parents and carers today that um in this graph that there are four sections so the first section and the top right hand corner in the blue box is students who have got um, the grades they want and they have a really high attitude to learning so this is kids um, students who are coming in working really hard every day um, and they've got good grades so well done to them they should be extremely proud of themselves you've worked hard put a shift in and you deserve everything that you have achieved so absolutely well done to you in the bottom right hand corner we have people who have worked really hard um, and you know they, they have high TA, ATL grades and they are really trying um, but they haven't necessarily got the grades they would like so this is the area that people can find demotivating and understandably if you're working hard and you're not possibly getting the grades that you'd like but this is where we have to have that motivation and that determination to keep going don't put yourself down pick yourself up hard work will get you far we know this as adults that if you work hard um, it will get you far and this is something that in our young people whether they're achieving the grades they would like or not encouraging hard work and determination will help them get far in life and that's a fundamental point here so keep up what you're doing if that is you regardless of what you achieve you can be a proud of yourself at the end of the day that you've worked as hard as you possibly could if um, a student finds themselves in the top left hand corner of the red box um, where they have a low ATL and they've got the grades they want, it's likely that they can actually perform a lot better than they are. So if they if they worked hard, imagine what they could achieve. So this is about encouraging our young people to aim high, not settling for the minimum that you can achieve. And hopefully what we want is their work rate to improve so that we don't uh, so that we don't end up with any disappointment at the end of year 11 if they have a bad day or their current grades have an element of luck involved which is sometimes the case when students have a low um, ATL grade and then we have our final box which is where we have low attitude to learning so not really working that hard or putting too much of an effort in um, and some grades that would like to be improved this is the wake-up call this goes back to my message at the start that now is the time to get going it's not too late um, we need to see that the low work rate and the low effort is going is likely to limit our life chances. So we need to make sure we up that work rate because um, as a minimum, that is what we want. We need high work rate, determination and people coming in and trying their best as often as they can. So this might be a conversation of setting targets, um, taking each day as it comes and making an effort to perform as well as you can whilst in your last eight to nine months in the Ecclesfield School building. So you can see the four things there. Each student will know, have a rough idea of where they are. And this is just to put into, into your minds, I suppose, of the kind of conversations um, that we can be having in relation to our grades and our attitude to learning, because it's not always just about grades and, and uh, it's not always just about the attitude to learning. They go hand in hand. But the main thing is to start with our attitude to learning. OK, so I'm going to talk briefly about the GCSE examinations and the mocks. So the first set of our year 11 mocks is in November and mocks have never been as important as this. And I'm not saying that to cause any worry or fear, um, but they in the last couple of years, they have been used to help um, with students grades. Um, so therefore, it's, it's really key, fundamental that they are taken seriously. Um, the first the, the set of mocks that our students did in year 10 were phenomenal um, in terms of their work rate towards them, in terms of their attitude in the hall, um, the way they conducted themselves was brilliant so um, more of that this year and and i'm sure we'll have no issues whatsoever 
We do expect GCSE exams to go ahead as normal with some possible adaptations in certain subjects, but as it stands, there'll be no delays and they will be taking place in the summer. So please be reassured that we're doing every, everything that we can to prepare our young people for these exams. And um, I'm going to talk through some strategies that hopefully working as a team, um, students, parents and school, um, we can make sure our young people are prepared and ready for them. And finally, before I talk about some revision uh, techniques and some things that um, that we can do together to to help our students, um, I just want to talk about getting the basics right. And, and this shows every day in school that when the basics are right and they're met, everything else falls into place and we can work on other things. Um, so thank you in advance for your support and ensure, ensuring that our basics are met. For example, our uniform and our equipment and our basics of uh, our ATL grades. So um, working hard, being resilient um, and our school ethos. And thank you as well for your support in ensuring that our policies are followed. Um, when all of that's in place, like I said, the rest is much easier to, to sort with and help and we can start every day in, in the right way. OK, so I'm going to talk through some things to consider when we're thinking about the build up to GCSEs. And I, I just want to start off by saying that I, I'm not, um, you know, I, I hope this doesn't come across as patronising in any way and I'm not teaching you to suck eggs. But I just want to talk through some key things that we know as a school from from all our experience that we have here, um, things that help students in their build up to their GCSEs and students in general. So the first thing is attendance. Students who attend more do better. That's a fact. So. It's students in the building, um, bums on seats, working hard, makes their uh, progress and their outcomes better. So please encourage and in ensure that your students are in school as much as they can be. Um, please think about if there's any place to study at home uh, with it, without any distractions, um, for example, mobile phones away or siblings and things like that. If there isn't, we can always provide places after school for students to work. Um, that is not a problem. Um, mobile technology, how do we know that isn't distracting our young people? Please make some ground walls and, and remove the phone from them if needed. I know that's hard for young people sometimes to leave their phones. Um, where is your child losing marks? Do they know? Have they spoken to their teacher and have they been proactive? Um, do they have revision guides? Is their time structured at home? Do they have a revision timetable? Um, do they know when they should be working and when they shouldn't? Are they completing homework or revising regularly? Are they getting quality sleep, which I know is a big one um, given the last couple of years are they back into good sleep routines and sleep patterns do they make their revision active um, are they getting some physical exercise a couple of times a week and how are they coping communication is key here again really um, not uh, teaching how to suck eggs here or, or trying to be patronizing at all but just some things here to think about talking um, to your son or daughter about and, and trying to get an idea and come up with a plan and making sure that as many of these things are in place um, because these things can make a really really big difference in terms of preparing them for their GCSEs so there's a little checklist here I'm not going to talk through it too much because it's on the slide and, and you can have a look at it but the key ones have highlighted in yellow a place at home to study without distractions away from mobile technology that they're going to be distracted by um, are they attending art school study and support and completing home learning and revision and do they know the most effective ways to revise so ending on that number nine do they know the most effective ways to revise is what I'm going to talk to you about next so revision techniques. I know um, it can be a bit daunting sometimes. A student asked me for help with maths uh, the other day and I couldn't remember how to do the maths problem. Um, and I felt kind of like oh, I should know how to do this. And I know that's a common feeling that people have that they're not able to help with the revision. So the best thing is it's an absolute myth that you need to be an expert in a subject to help with revision. The best thing that you can do to help your young person is to help them be organized, encourage them to do their work and help them organize their time. So it might just be guiding them to help uh, read through notes in their books or go through their revision guides or make revision cards, but helping them structure their time and encouraging them to work hard and put the time and effort into it is the most important thing that you can do rather than necessarily knowing anything about the subject. So exam technique is often a memory game. It's often about what we call recall. So trying to remember things that they've studied over a longer period of time. So memory is strengthened by revisiting information regularly. And that's why it's important that revision is done in little chunks consistently over longer periods of time rather than cramming. So things like regular quizzes, teaching others, practice questions and making revision cards. 
on this screen here, there are lots of revision techniques, which I'm going to send out um, to all of year 11 as well and parents, but just some ideas of things that you can do. If um, your uh, if our students are stuck for anything to do, um, please, you can guide them to these. You know, you can say, oh, you know, Mr. Wilson sent you that uh, list of revision techniques round and teachers will be discussing revision techniques with students as well as we go through. Um, the last thing um, in terms of revision is the revision timetable. So um, one thing that's really important to do is create a revision timetable for your um, for your young people. So there's an example on here and um, we'll begin doing some work on this in form times on Wednesday mornings. Um, but like I said, here is an example. So if you can help your um, son or daughter structure, help our students structure their time um, and how they're going to do that, it's, it's going to be more effective. What's key here? is having some breaks built in so it's really important that breaks are built in so that they have time to relax and they have time to do things that they enjoy doing rather than just cramming all of their time with work um, like i said every wednesday morning during form time in the build-up to our mocks we're going to be practicing different revision techniques and we're going to have a go at preparing our own revision timetable soon um, but please feel free to do this uh, with them as well i think it'd be a really good idea OK, so here's just an example of revision at home and what that might look like. Um, obviously, not space is uh, different uh, for different people, but if they have an area where they can stick some uh, mind maps up or cards or revision techniques, that is a huge help. OK, so finally, just in terms of communication with school, all of the form tutor emails can be found here on this slide and on the school website. Um, all your form tutors will have contacted uh, parents and students alike as well, so you should have their contact details. Please contact them if you need anything. They're your first point of contact for your for your children. Um, you also have my name is Travis's email address at the bottom here, so please feel free to get in contact with us. Email is the best way um, and we will always get back to you as soon as we can. Please make sure that your school email address and phone numbers are up to date um, so that we can contact you as and when we need to. There are also other support mechanisms that we have on offer in school. We sign up to Cooth, which is a counselling service, and there are lots of other websites on here. We also have a booklet um, available in the pastoral office for students to access any different external agencies if they need some support outside of school or something that they don't necessarily feel um, comfortable with in school or that they can get the specialist uh, needs that they can um, from different services. OK, so finally, the last thing I said to our students in our assembly is you have got this. We must have faith. We must be confident and we must be positive. You can do it if you believe you can. This is one of the most important years of our life. So make sure that you don't have any regrets at the end of it. And if we work as a team, as parents, students and school, I have no doubt that we can make sure that our ch these children in year 11 leave with all the skills they need to go and have a, a happy life and do what they want to do. Cool. Thank you very much for listening and um, thank you for attending virtually. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of this session or alternatively, you can email um, your son's daughter's form tutor, uh, Miss Travis or myself. All right. Thank you very much and take care. Bye. Good evening, everybody. My name is Siobhan Melody and I'm one of the assistant head teachers at Ecclesfield School. Um, I've been asked to speak to you tonight about our brand new Sims parent app. This is a brand new application um, that we are launching across our first half term this year. Um, so between now and October half term, you will all receive an invite to um, download the app and to start to use the app. Um, why have we made this decision to bring the app in at this stage? Well, we fundamentally believe in the power of being able to communicate in a consistent method with every single one of our stakeholders, from teachers to support staff, to parents as well as the kids. Um, so that's why we've looked at various different methods of using um, and refining our communication streams. We feel now that the Sims Parent app is something that after this last year, year and a half, we are all in a better position technologically to be able to access the Sims Parent app. Um, and we've got a better understanding of the needs of levels of support that need to be put into place so that everybody can access it. So that's why at this point we've decided to launch the all new Sims Parent app. The app allows you to receive push notifications from the school. So you will, if you've downloaded it as an app, you will get push notifications just like you would for many other apps that will come through on your phone. Um, you will receive your child's report via that. You'll be able to view reports via the app and um, you'll be able to see your child's attendance and punctuality 
their rewards as well as their behavior points. In time, we're looking to roll out more and more options within the functionality of the Sims Parent app. So you will in the future be able to book events via it, pay for tickets, pay for trips, even see your child's homework via the app. And this will be our school's new method of communicating with parents from November onwards. After this point, unless um, you put into writing to the school to say that you still continue to request um, paper copies for, of, of any um, letters that are going out, we will only communicate via the Sims Parent app. Okay, so to facilitate a more effective rollout of the Sims Parent app, we aren't going to launch it with all of our year groups at once. Um, we don't feel that that would give you the best experience and we also want to make sure that this is a really impactful rollout straight from the start. So across this half term you will receive a letter similar to the one that is on the screen. Um, that letter will give you your activation code to be able to log on, download the Sims Parent app. You can use it as a web browser, you don't have to have the app, um, but I would recommend the app heavily. Um, because it is the interface of it is much more user friendly. Um, you will get a code that you will need to use when you log on to activate it. We will also send to your email address um, an email invite. That for me is the easiest way um, to uh, join the Sims Parent app because all you have to do is click the big green button that says accept invitation and then you'll be asked to put your code in, your activation code. Your code is for you, um, it is personal just to you, um, and then once you've logged in and checked some key details, then you will be able to access the app in its entirety. Um, I just want to make clear to everybody that we use the email addresses that are given to us when you first join the school, and if they have not been reviewed or updated, um, now is a good time to do so. If you find that you haven't received an invite um, by you know, the time it's getting near October half term, obviously on social media we will tell you when we are going to be launching this. We will be sending text messages to you so you will know. If you don't receive an invite um, by your email, it is probably a very good chance for you to just call the school speak to student services and just check that we've got your correct email address. It will be the email address that you've been using to access the SIMS um, parents, sorry, our parents evening, school cloud parents evening software. If you are new to the school and you've never used that software yet, don't worry. Um, just keep a look out for the email invitation. Sometimes it does go into your spam folder, so please do check that first before you contact the school. And it really is as simple as that. It's clicking on that big green button, registering with using your email address and your child's details, and then you will be straight in to um, the Sims Parent app. You can register, you can sign in. Um, with various different ways. You can use your Twitter, your Facebook, um, Google, or you can sign up with an email address. It's entirely up to you. Um, once you get into it, you can see your child's uh, details. The interface will look like the central dashboard image that is on your screen at the moment. Um, and if you've got more than one child at the school, it will have them all on the same profile. So when you log in, you will get something similar to the image on the right hand side of the screen now where you will be able to click on the child um, and it will take you to their individual details. The Joy of the Sims Parent app is, it tells you when all of our information evenings are, parents evenings. It will have links to the websites for you to be able to purchase. Um, uniform as well as being able to book onto events, book into parents even in events, but also it allows you to see how your child is performing day to day, which is something that I'm sure we would all appreciate. Once again, if you have any um, issues using the Sims Parent app, I'm sure I've made it sound far more difficult than it actually is. Um, if you do, there will be a link on the letter that's going to be sent to you to our IT team who will be able to support you in ensuring that you can use the Sims Parent app. Okay, thanks very much for listening to me this evening and I'll hand back to Claire.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Miss Johnson. I'm the assistant head teacher um, who is in charge of exams, your child's progress, and obviously reporting um, how your child is getting on to yourselves throughout this year. Tonight, I particularly want to speak to you about exams um, the assessments we will be doing this year to monitor your child's progress in preparation for their exams and any exam qualification changes that we know about at the moment in subject areas um, to uh, reflect on the pandemic. Also, I'd like to speak to you about um, how we will be monitoring your child's attitude to learning this year. Um, as we do know, obviously, how important attitude to learning is um, and how much of an impact it has on your child's progress. Hopefully you'll find tonight useful the information that I provide you. But please, you know, if I've missed anything or you'd like to know something a bit more, um, just write it into the chat box and I'll hopefully be able to answer for you. So I always like to start with um, our mission as a school, uh, what we're about as a school and also touch upon how we measure your child's progress um, and the way we measure your child's progress is through three areas and we call these three areas buckets. We've got obviously bucket one, which is your maths and English, and that is double weighted for your child. We then have bucket two, which includes your EBAC sub subjects. So that is your sciences. Um, it is your humanities. So that could be geography or history. Um, it also includes your modern foreign languages. And we cover Spanish, German and French. And also computer science is included in bucket two as well. And then we have bucket three, which is all the other optional subjects, um, such as my own subject, uh, PE, um, and also things like health and social care, uh, all the ones that have not been listed before in one and two. So as our mission states, our aim as a school is to ensure your child gains uh, as many qualifications across a broad area in all of the three buckets. Um, because we want your child to have a broad range of qualifications to take them on into further education. So most of you will now know about the change in grading from letters to numbers, but it is important that we reiterate, OK, that um, a grade four is your standard pass and grade five is a strong pass. We strive for all our students um, to achieve a grade four um, as a minimum in their subjects, just to support them in their future education. So um, I just want to discuss with you now about year 11 assessments and reporting home to yourselves on your child's progress. We would normally assess your child three times a year. Um, with the first assessment being at the start of the academic year, which would actually be right now. But um, we have made the decision not to assess your child um, right now. Um, we don't think it will be of any use for your child in terms of their um, supporting them and in terms of their mental health. Um, we only just assessed them in July. They did their year 10 mocks in July. Um, there has been a lot of disruption over the last 18 months. Um, so again, like I say, we don't feel like it'd be supportive um, to them or their mental health by making them now come back after six weeks holiday and ask them to, you know, to sit in assessment again. What they actually need is structure and to get on in the lessons uh, covering the curriculum. That is, that is what's needed. So the first time we will assess will be in November mock exams. And that'll be just after October half term. So we give students an opportunity to revise before October. Staff will help them prepare revision uh, skills before they'll have that opportunity during October half term to also prepare. And we'll do some um, some staff will come in and do some interventions with students that they need. Um, and then there will be a period of approximately three weeks where students will sit exams. It is a big period, long period, it's three weeks, and that's because of the number of papers that each subject has. You know, the minimum number a subject has is two, and then you've got a range from like English that have four papers, and we have to cover them all. Um, we also have to allow staff time to mark the papers and also an opportunity to get together to moderate 
with each other. So the staff will not be inputting the mock exam data until the 29th of November and you will receive the report on the 13th of December. And in that report, you will get a current grade of how they did in that mock exam. And also um, you'll, we will be letting you know and informing you of their attitude to learning. This next assessment will be uh, the February mock exams and that is just again, just after February mock, uh, February half term. And again, staff will help prepare your child um, with, with the revision that they need. Um, and again, there'll be intervention on holiday intervention in February half term in preparing the child ready for those exams. Um, again, there's a gap for the data inputs, and that's because of the amount of papers and to allow staff to mark and moderation. So you will receive the report in April. And again, that will be a current grade. And hopefully you'll see that increase from November. Um, and also you will uh, see their attitude to learning as well. It's also important for me to tell you that after the exam, students do get an opportunity to reflect on their performance. So students will be able to um, look at where their strengths were in the paper. They'll also be able to look at the misconceptions. What do they not get quite right? Um, it allows the teacher to look at class misconceptions and it also in informs their uh, planning for the uh, in preparation for the exams in May and June. Now, you know, um, I don't want to at any point put pressure on your child in terms of mock exams, um, but they they are important. They're important for teaching staff because it helps inform them of where your child is and it helps them move in terms of moving forward, where to plug the gaps in their learning. Um, but also, you know, I must I have to tell you that, you know, this year, the last academic year, sorry, um, the mock exams, you know, were of, were vital to us. Um, we ended up having to teacher assess grades. Uh, we were responsible for giving children their, their, their appropriate grade. And to allow us to do that, it was based on a lot of the mock exam results that they gained. So at no point am I um, adding any pressure on your child, but at the same time, I do have to uh, point out the, uh, the the huge importance of these mock exams in support in your child um, in in their further education, um, and to ensure that they get the grade that they they deserve. We don't know what's happening with exams next year. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, um, you know, COVID, we're coming to the other side of it. We we hopefully not going to have more impact from the pandemic. But we just don't know at this point, you know, this time last year, I was saying to parents, um, you know, we don't know what's happening with exams. Um, hopefully it'll be OK. And obviously in January we were in a lockdown. So um, uh, I, I can't say too much at the moment in terms of um, what's happening with the exams. I can't tell you anything. Um, all I know is that hopefully we will be sitting them. But these mocks are hugely important in for us to be able to support your child. So tonight is also a great opportunity for me to talk to you about um, our attitude to learning. Um, attitude to learning is everything. Um, if the learning environment, if the learning conditions aren't right, then um, we won't achieve academic progress. If we want to ensure we have academic progress for all our children, we need to ensure that all of them are focused and engaged in their learning. Now, one thing we also do is we don't have the same expectations of a, a year seven um, to a year 11. We expect our year 11s to strive for more in terms of um, their attitude and, and what they're wanting from it in so that we are preparing them for um, sixth form or college or whatever they would like to do or apprenticeships and um, anything that they move on to doing. So I obviously um, here you'll notice in year seven and eight, we focus on building good learning habits. But by the time we get to year nine to 11, which is the one I want us to focus on, because um, obviously that is where your child is, is looking at developing good learning habits. And then obviously if we move on to our higher education, if they go to any of our Minerva Trust schools, which is the, uh, schools like uh, Chapel Town Academy or High Stores, um, then they will focus on mastering those good learning habits. Um, you know, we have high expectations of our students. We want them to be well-rounded citizens going into the community. Um, and so, you know, throughout the five years, um, this is a huge focus for us. So here is an example of our attitude to learning criteria um, uh, year nine to 11. And like I said, it is um, developing good learning habits. And we go from developing level one 
to developing level five and it increases in uh, higher expectations as the levels go go up. Um, you'll also notice across the top um, are the five uh, learning principles. So we've got behaviour for learning, engagement in learning, responsibility for learning, feedback for learning and independent learning. And we concentrate on all those five principles during your child's um, education here at Ecclesfield. This, um, obviously you can see some of the, the, the key words that we expect from our students. It is a challenging attitude to learning. We've got, you know, um, self-discipline. Um, we've got um, students to be proactive, um, engaged in their learning, um, get involved in, uh, in, in enrichment, um, self-aware, able to refine their work. You know, this is a challenge and there's high expectations here, but this is because it is to follow our vision. So our vision as a school is for all our students to be successful and to be successful, they have to be surrounded by an aspirational environment. We also, our other vision is that we have a collaborative community. Um, our, like I said before, uh, our priority is to ensure that we support uh, our community in uh, bringing up well-rounded citizens uh, with you as their family. So um, this really matches up to the vision that we, we want for, for all our students and all our children. So you might be sitting here tonight thinking, Right, I'm really keen to know, after 18 months of disruption of my child's learning, how are you going to uh, support my child in, term, in their curriculum um, so that they are prepared for their exams? And the, uh, there's two areas I'd like to just discuss with you. One of them is obviously the curriculum consolidation. You know, our, st our staff have looked at the, their curriculum and adapted where needed. Um, staff have thought really hard about how best to support your child in this uh, next this this current academic year um, and ensure that they have the knowledge that they need to go on to whatever they would like to do um, and support your child to prepare them for those exams um, but at the same time it's been, they've really tried to balance between ensuring that they support to prepare for exams at the same time as look after their mental health um, and, you know, I'm not just saying it, I, I genuinely, you know, they, they've worked really hard and um, your child has been their number one priority in, in, in this, in, t in terms of preparing the curriculum. Um, obviously, there's also been some uh, exam changes, um, some qualification adaptations to um, take into account for the pandemic. Um, and I'm just going to now talk about them on the next slide. So now I'm going to go through a list of some of the changes in, in the qualifications and some of the subject areas, some tweaks that have been made to take into account for the pandemic. Um, one thing that the government have confirmed is they will not be uh, delaying the exams or moving them further back. So last academic year before they cancelled them, there was talk of them being moved to July. This academic year, that is not the case. They've already confirmed that the exams will be held in um, May, June, June time. Um, as the year goes on, we will be hearing more information. Um, I will make sure I communicate as quickly as I can with you um, well, as soon as I know any updates and I'll probably do that uh, through social media and our school website. So if you don't follow our social media for you know, our Twitter, our Facebook pages or Instagram, um, I would highly recommend that because that'll be the first point of call in me getting any information out to you. Um, so let's just go through some of the, some of the changes that um, have been proposed um, in, in, in terms of some of the subject areas. If your child does art and design, um, they have um, suggested that there is no external exam and that has been confirmed. No ex external exam, it will all be coursework based to take into, into account for the pandemic. We've then got computer science who have a section of coursework, 20 hours, um, and they, the proposal is that this can be completed outside lesson time. English language, the spoken language will be assessed internally by teachers. Uh, geography, um, the proposal, proposal is the removal of the fieldwork um, experience. Um, that results in paper three, being reduced in marks because they will be removing the fieldwork project. 
GCSE PE um, have confirmed that they will be assessing students in two sports, not the original three. What we don't know yet is how the moderation will work. Um, usually a moderator will come in and assess the student, um, look at the students' performances and whether, uh, decide whether they agree with our grades. They haven't decided whether the moderator will be coming in or whether we will have to do video evidence. Um, you've then got science, the practical element, of course, will be assessed internally. Um, we've then got some vocational courses that are Cambridge National, so that's engineering, sports science and health and social care. Um, they have confirmed that the two units that students covered in year 10 um, can be given a teacher, teacher assessed grade. So if your child is in any of those three subjects, they will be given a teacher assessed that grade. That means that the teacher is giving their grade for them um, based on the uh, work that your child has done so far. I will be sending some information out to you uh, which tells you what evidence is going to be taken into account because it's really important that you know what will be taken into account for those grades. If your child is hospitality and catering, that is the Welsh board. Um, they have also agreed and confirmed that they would like component one, which is the external exam, uh, to be teacher assessed grade. And that is the exam your child did in the mock exams in July. So again, that's where you know mock exams are important. Uh, that is being used to uh, give a teacher assessed grade for your child. We then have our BTEX, which is performing arts, music, travel and tourism, enterprise and digital information technology. And again, we'll be doing teacher assessed grades for the content that was taught in year 10 and sending that out. And again, we'll make sure that we send you the information so you know what evidence we are sending to the exam boards um, and what we're going to take into account. This morning, your child was given a pack in tutor time. In this pack was some uh, useful equipment that is just to try and give them some ideas on how revision. So there were some revision cards in there, some post-it notes, um, a pen, a pencil, um, a highlighter, just trying to encourage them to look at different ways of revising. Every student revises differently and learns and retains information differently. So it's just to try and motivate them to start having a look and think about how they would like to revise. Also in that pack is um, a pastoral information booklet on some tips on how to revise um, and also a subject pack which is, gives you an overview of what they'll be taught. So a subject information booklet which will um, it identifies what your child will be taught in each of the subjects this year. You'll also see this revision guide uh, order form. Uh, if you are interested in ordering any revision guides, please complete the order form, send it in with your child and uh, hand it in and we will uh, make sure we order those revision guides and they'll be coming shortly in preparation for November mocks. Um, so uh, hopefully that will be of use to you. If you need any more information, please just email the curriculum leader for the subject area. He'll be able to advise you um, if there's you know, more than one revision book and you would like to know which one's most useful for your child, please feel free to email the curriculum leader and they will support you. We also pay a yearly subscription for uh, something called GCSE pod and that's for all subject areas. Um, previously it was just for English and maths um, it is now for all subjects um, and the way your child accesses GCSE pod is through the link that I show here on the on the screen and they just use their school uh, login details. This is a great way um, of revising, support and revision. It fits into their everyday lifestyle. It's podcasts a lot of the time um, where you know, students can listen to on the phone um, you know, when they're on the bus or in the car on the way to school or if they're walking to school. It's um, a really um, a really great way of, of revising. Um, feedback that I've got so far is English literature is particularly helpful in listening to the poems and go in the podcast, uh, break down the poems and explain them in more detail. Um, so it is a really useful revision, re revision resource. And I would suggest uh, trying to encourage your child to use this in, the, in their own time in preparation for exams.
finally from me, um, thank you for listening tonight. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, on my final slide, show this Twitter page at Echo Exams. Uh, our exams officer um, is in charge of this Twitter page. She uh, updates um, all the key information. So if there's any changes to exams or there's any information about mock exams, uh, the timetable, things like that, she will always post it on this Twitter page. So if you want to keep up to date um, with, with the, the, the quickest information, please follow this page um, it is really helpful for you um, and like I say you can ask any questions on there as well and the exams officer will get back to you. Thank you for tonight uh, I know it's a lot of information I've given you uh, like I say if you need any further information just please write in the chat box and hopefully I'll be able to help you. Um, thanks again for everything tonight everybody and I hope you enjoy it. Good evening, my name is Mrs Stevens and I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to talk through some top tips for English language and literature this year, both for your child as they come to school each day and for you at home and how you can be helping. I would have gone through this with you hopefully last year, so this won't be unfamiliar to you, but just a reminder that there are two GCSEs that your child is sitting um, and they are broken down into four different exams. Now, at the moment, this is what we've already covered. So anything in green we have covered in lesson and we should be at a point where your child is feeling quite confident with their knowledge and their skills related to those topics. One of the topics that perhaps they're not feeling as confident with might be English language paper two because that is one that we covered when we went back into lockdown last year. That is what we're starting this year with so your child is already having a chance to readdress those skills this year. And we've also got two other sections there in yellow that we need to think about this year. Now we're uncertain at the moment what the guidance is going to be in terms of the exam set up and it may be that one of these sections is removed from the exam and as soon as we're able to confirm that we will address that but at the moment these are the areas that we still need to cover this year. In terms of priorities I just want to kind of address that obviously if they're coming to lesson and giving each lesson 100% then your child will be on the road to success then following that it should just be focusing on their independent learning, what they're covering at home, um, little and often revision and that P6 coming in as, um, as and when necessary um, and not being the priority above the other three. Just to address uh, what would have already been said about kind of attitude to learning, I just thought I'd say what some of these skills that we're wanting in your child look like in English in particular. So, for example, what does focus look like in English? Well, they need to be able to read quite long texts without being distracted and they need to summarise the main events and ideas of those texts. They need to be able to write for quite long extended periods of time, so over two hours for one of those literature exams. And they need to be completing revision independently, even better if they can be doing it with a timer and without distractions. In terms of being organised, I'd like to think that they could have a revision folder per GCSE, so one folder for English language, one for English literature. Hopefully they can be bringing their revision guides and personal notes into lessons, being proactive with that, bringing in one of the other skills, um, memorising key quotations, methods and approaches to each question as they learn it in lesson, thinking about how they can be doing that at home in their revision. And then preparing for Friday essay lessons. So this year we've taken the decision to make sure that your child has the opportunity to practice those exam skills once a week and we will give them the exam question on a Monday. So once they've seen the question, they get to have the rest of the week to plan and prepare for it and they can bring their notes and then have a go at the question on a Friday lesson. So being organised would be making sure they've got those notes, making sure they've prepared, ready for that timed question. In terms of refining work, they need to be able to kind of redraft, rewrite, improve their answers in lesson and in their own time um, and adapt their revision in line with feedback on strengths. So there's no point in them revising what they're already secure on, already confident with. And if you haven't seen um, Austin's Butterfly in terms of the impact of feedback before, I suggest you have a little look at the video on YouTube. Just type in Austin's Butterfly and it just shows the power of listening to feedback. I'm not going to read out all of these suggestions, um, but there are so many things that we would kind of encourage your child to be doing and you to be doing to help at home. Some of these things have already been said. The most important thing would be just talking about that, their learning and their skills at home with them. Ask them what they're confident with, ask them what they're finding difficult and discuss how you can be helping. 
to support you with that, we will be sending out an English bulletin at least once a week. So spot, keep an eye out for that from Miss Holland. It will tell you what we're doing in lesson, what's being set for home learning, any revision opportunities and suggestions, some tips in terms of revision, some key topics to be thinking about for language, and then just any other key information at the bottom. So please do engage with that. Um, it will be sent to you and your child as well. So please just make sure we've got your, your up-to-date email address. These websites and apps are very much the same as last year. The addition is this top one about um, Digital Theatre Plus, which is something that we've invested in this year to support your child in their learning and in their revision. They're going to have it introduced to them in the coming weeks, so don't panic if they've not heard of it yet. But as an example, it is full of videos and content and support to do with a lot of their key literature topics um, and a lot of their key texts that they will be needing to kind of know confidently for their exams. So once your child has kind of got confident with that, they will have access to it at home completely for free. There is an absolute wealth of all sorts of other plays and videos that you can be engaging with at home as a family. And I would just suggest that you take the time to have a look at it and explore it with your child as soon as possible. Just to address something which is likely to come up at some point this year and that is the idea that they can't revise English language. I just want to quash that kind of statement straight away if possible and say you absolutely can. We've got these revision guides for English language which were available last year and are still available for you to purchase think about this year. You've got a couple of other suggestions that I can give you in terms of specific language revision or just steps to revision um, again with that kind of organisation skill in mind. And just talking about key topics, one of the biggest things that comes up in English language, especially in paper two, is key topics, key events, things that they need to be able to have opinions on, things that they need to be able to consider different perspectives on. Um, so the more that you can be talking about these sorts of things at home and just having discussions about learning, the better prepared your child's going to be for those exams. If after everything I've said so far, your takeaway at the moment is perhaps where do I start? My biggest suggestion to you would be looking at GCSE pod with your child, getting the app on as many pieces of technology in your home as possible and exploring GCSE pod in detail in the next couple of weeks. Having a plan as to when they can look at it for 10, 15 minutes a day, getting those revision folders together where they can start making notes and just starting little and often if they haven't started already, that would be my biggest suggestion. At the start, obviously, you could see my email address is astevens at echoschool.com. Please do email me if you've got any specific questions or email your child's English teacher as a first port of call. And I wish you all the best this year. Thank you very much. Good evening, I'm Mrs Earn, the Curriculum Lead for Maths. I'm going to go through some strategies you can use to support your child at home with maths. Two out of the three exam papers use a calculator. It is important they have their own calculator and they know how to use it. Please ensure they bring their calculator to school so they can learn how to use it in lessons. Calculators and revision guides can be purchased from the finance office. Revision starts now. A little bit often is more effective than lots in one go. A formula sheet is no longer given at the front of the exam paper. They need to learn the key formula. They can also revise by making or buying their own revision cards. We sell Corbett Maths revision cards for £6.25 in school. Please ask to see your child's detailed question level analysis after every big assessment. You can then encourage them to revise the highlighted red topics. You can also help by asking them about homework and ensuring it is completed on time. Websites such as Hegarty Maths, On Maths and YouTube can provide your child with lots of videos and questions to support them with their revision. The learning logs used at the end of the topic can also be used to guide their revision. Type Hegarty Maths into Google. They will then use their name and date of birth to log in. They will be asked to set their own password the first time they log in. They need to make sure this is something they can remember. My task is at the top right hand side of the page. This will show how many uncompleted tasks they have. There is a video which covers everything they need for the quiz. 
Suitable videos and quizzes can be found by typing a topic name into the search bar. They do not have to register for on maths, but progress will not be stored. On maths provides lots of exam question practice. You can register for on maths for free and their progress will be stored. Remember, lots of exam questions can be found on YouTube. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the evening. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Tasker and I'm the Curriculum Leader for Science. Most of our classes will have exactly the same teachers moving through from year 10 into year 11, OK, which is really important because they can see the journey that the pupils are at. They already know their strengths and weaknesses and they can start to move on and take them all the way through to their exams next May and June. So these are the topics that we're going to be focusing on and covering this year. Within those, there will be opportunities whereby we will be going back and reviewing previously taught content. Although we have assessment points throughout year 11, it's really, really important to remember that we're not preparing the pupils for an assessment in November or an assessment in kind of February, March. We're preparing them for the end game, for that assessment that's going to take place in May and June. And so therefore all we're doing during the assessment weeks is we are constantly looking for knowledge gaps and skill weaknesses so we can identify those we can work on them with the pupils and we can help them to continually make progress and improve so all we ask when we come to do these assessments during the year is to go in revise thoroughly OK, and just do your best. There's no um, there's no problem if you make mistakes. In fact, this is the time to make mistakes during these assessments, because all we can do as teachers is we will look at it. We will assess where we are and we'll help them to move forward. The quote here is is really, really important, OK, because quite often when we're preparing for assessments and we're trying to learn things it's really tempting to just keep reading over and over and over your notes or reading through textbooks but actually going over and over and over information isn't the best way to prepare for exams the best thing to do is actually train your brain to find the information and retrieve it so we will do a lot of that and it's integrated into our lessons already um, but what we will do is this so in every single lesson our starter activity will be based on previous topics and previous lessons. So straight away, we can have a look. What do we remember? Practice actually retrieving information and have the opportunity to link different parts of the course together. We're going to have loads and loads of exam style questions. We already do that a lot, but it's important that pupils are able to look at the style of questions that you're going to get, break the questions down, understand what is meant by those command words, understand the key terms that need to be included. And as part of that, we will provide model answers, also talk through our thought processes when we are looking at exam questions and trying to understand what they're requiring us to do. And like I said before, when it comes to the assessments, everything that we do is aimed at looking at where pupils are now, how you can progress. OK, so make mistakes in your assessments, make mistakes in lessons. It isn't a problem. OK, the problem is when you stop trying or the problem is when you're not prepared to learn from your mistakes. Lastly, from me, how you can make sure that you are effectively preparing for your science assessments and exams. First thing is attend lessons. OK, I know there's days when we'll wake up and we can't be bothered but make the effort. This is a really important year that we've got coming on. So get out of bed, get some coffee down you, OK, and get yourself in. Make sure that you've got everything you need. OK, so you've got a calculator, you've got your exercise book, purple pen, green pen, pencil, ruler, the works. Make sure that you're all set and you're ready to go. If you need help, if there's something that you don't understand, please, please, please put your hand up and ask. Don't sit on anything that's kind of making you worried for days, weeks, whatever. Deal with it straight away. Put your hand up, 
ask your teacher if they can just go over something again, ask them a question if there's something you don't quite understand, OK, and we can go over that and we can explain the same thing in many, many different ways so we can make sure that you have a really good grasp of what we are covering. Use your Educate account, OK, so we're going to be setting homeworks on this. Homeworks are set on the first day of the month, they're due on the last day of the month. So it's nice and straightforward. You don't need to be worried about different kind of due dates for your homework because it's the set two days there. Educate is really, really important. First of all, the homework tasks are going to be based on quizzes that will ask you to retrieve information from year 11, year 10 and year 9. So it gives your brain that chance to retrieve information, which I've already discussed is, is really, really um, important when it comes to preparing for exams. Also, what it does is it everyone on there will have their own individual progress report, which you can access. And on there, it will tell you your areas of strength and your areas of weakness. You can then look at your areas of weakness. You can go back in your exercise book, use your revision guides if you've got them. OK, you can have a look at those different areas again, and then you can set yourself a quiz on Educate looking at those weak areas and it will give your brain chance to retrieve the information that you've looked at. OK, so it's really, really effective for you to focus your preparation and focus your revision by looking at the areas that you're not so good at rather than focusing on the areas that you're brilliant at, but you just like going over it because it makes you feel good. We also have P6s running on Tuesdays, three while four. So come along to those, please. Completely voluntary. OK, we're not going to force you to come, but come along again. It's going to be a small group situation. So if there's something specific that you want staff to go over, we can do that. We also have um, a computer in that's available on Tuesdays from three to four. So if you want to use Educate and do some independent work in there with a member of science staff, you can do that as well. Good evening. My name is Leslie Cassell and I'm the Careers Advisor at Ecclesfield School. The purpose of my presentation this evening is to provide initial information with regards to Sheffield Progress, which is the search and apply programme used by all Sheffield schools, and to also introduce you to research resources to help with choices and decision making. There'll be further presentations available providing more in-depth information with regards to each step that students need to take following a recommended timeline. Students will be using Sheffield Progress to search for courses and to make their applications. All students have been provided with their own personal login, so they're now in a position to start exploring all the resources on Sheffield Progress to help with their decision making and to start building their profile in preparation for submitting their application. All applications need to be submitted before the end of January 2022. Sheffield Progress provides a wide range of information for students and parents, and parents don't need a login to access the information part of Sheffield Progress. So if you've got any questions about how do I get to college? Do I need any special equipment for the course I'm applying for? How can I best improve my chances of getting the, those grades I need for the course that I'm interested in? There's information on different types of courses. Most students tend to go on to full time study, but what does that actually mean? People are also interested in apprenticeships and again, it's like, well, what's the difference between an apprenticeship and a full time course? How do I apply? And then you might be interested in a traineeship. If you're not quite ready for an apprenticeship, you can leave school, you can start a traineeship and that's a little bit like a stepping stone. But there's all sorts of information on there that can help with, with your choices. So all students have been provided already with their username and password and they've logged in and activated their account. They've also been provided with guidance on how to write a personal statement. And this personal statement doesn't need to be completed yet. It's a work in progress and it's something that the students can keep adding to and perfecting until they're ready to submit their application at the end of January. Further sessions will help them to complete their personal profile and their grades will be upgrade, uploaded uh, centrally, so they won't have to put those in unless they've got any additional things they'd like to add, such as uh, piano uh, exam results, anything that they've done in the past that they'd like to include on there. 
Students will also be shown how to save their preferred courses into a favourites folder. So if a student, it's a little bit like online shopping, if a student's interested in a particular course, but they just actually just look at getting an overview, they can pop those courses into a favourites basket. At a later date, they can go back and look at the details, such as what does the course involve, what are the entry requirements. And students will all be offered after school support sessions if they need any further help and guidance. Additional research information is available on the careers learning platform on the MLE. There are direct links to different colleges, say NHS careers, lots of valuable information in there. But most importantly, we've subscribed this year to Unifrog. Now, Unifrog is going to be available to students across all year groups. But to start with, we've introduced it to our year 11 students to get them on that journey towards making an informed decision. Unifrog is, uni Unifrog is unique because it provides a locker for students. So if they've watched a video, got some information and they want to save it, they can save that information into their own personal locker. It's also got a direct messaging system to staff, so a student can create their personal statement in Unifrog in its draft form and their form teacher can have a look at it and make constructive uh, uh, suggestions for change. And also if I come across any trips or events, if there's anything going off in school or if there's any other information that I find that might be useful for a student, I can send that to the student and they can save that in their locker. What's also very good about Unifrog is we've got access for parents. So you'll be receiving a letter shortly that will explain how you can access Unifrog and set up your account and um, that you can also download an app onto your phone. So that will be coming out to you shortly. If you still need information, if Unifrog doesn't give you everything that you need and Sheffield progresses for not giving you the information that you're looking for, there are other websites such as the National Career Service, the National Apprenticeship Service and also the local colleges. Um, but you probably will find most of what you're looking for on Sheffield Progress and Unifrog, but these are available if that's not the case. So just a final note, and students and parents will be getting this information again, so don't worry if you can't remember any of this tonight. But I just wanted to stress that when doing the research, students need to make sure that they look at what they're applying for and to make sure it's suitable for them and that they're on target to meet the entry requirements for that particular course or apprenticeship. And it's always a really good idea to have a backup application in place just in case something goes wrong. A quick word about A-levels, so students can apply for up to three sixth form schools and a sixth form school is a school with a year 12 and 13. But if they're applying to sixth form schools, they must put these schools in order of preference. Students can also study A-levels at sixth form colleges and they can apply for as many colleges as they wish and they don't have to put them in any preferred order. So just a reminder, support is available for all students. It's the first time they've done this and there's going to be a lot of unknowns. That's why I'm here to help. So I can help with understanding all different course types and levels. We can help with uh, completing the Sheffield Progress application and also to give you an understanding of progression opportunities, not just the next steps, but beyond. So it, Students will be provided with a timeline every month to say where they should be in the process and if they're falling behind, they just need to come and see me and I can get them back on track. So just a few key dates for your diary. On the 14th of October, we will be hosting our annual careers opportunities evening. I really do hope you can join us. It's a fantastic opportunity to speak face to face with training providers, local college representatives, information about apprenticeships. We have the armed forces, we have employers. So it's a really, really good evening and it's a great way to consolidate all that research. Students can start submitting their applications from the 25th of November and all applications need to be have, have been submitted by the 31st of January. In order to meet that deadline, students need to be aiming to apply by mid-January at the latest. 
So that's all from me for this evening. I hope you found this introduction useful. There will be further slides in this series to help with all aspects of future planning and applying. If you do have any questions that remain unanswered, then just drop me an email. I will always get back to you. If you feel that your son or daughter may benefit from a careers interview, then you can always send me an email and I can arrange that as well. Uh, if you've got any issues with any logging into Sheffield Progress or logging into Unifrog, then just drop an email to the careers assistant, Joe Munden, and I'm sure she'll be able to help with that. So for now, that's goodbye from me and I will be speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for listening tonight. I hope you found the information useful. Um, we will be publishing all your questions and the answers to it. We've been answering your questions this evening as we've been going along on the event. Um, Obviously, if there's a few couple more that we need to answer, we'll carry on answering them and we'll publish uh, all question answers and the recording of tonight's uh, uh, video presentation all on our school website for you so that you can go back to it or if you missed a part of it. Please don't also forget um, we gave your child uh, packs this morning in tutor time. In those packs is the re revision uh, guidance booklet, subject information, so it just tells you what your child will be taught this year. Uh, there's a revision guide order form. Um, there's also some exam guidance on rules about um, from JCQ. And we've also given you, uh, your child, some resources in terms of um, revision equipment and resources and things like that. Um, obviously, communication is key throughout all this year. Uh, we will try our hardest to communicate with you as much as possible in the best ways we can. Like I said earlier in our in presentation, that'll be mostly through our website and social media. Um, there's going to be probably you know, we don't know what's going to happen this year. We don't know how the exams are going to pan out. Um, so we, there may be even more changes as we carry on through the year. And like I say, we will just make sure that whenever we hear a change, we communicate that with you. Um, it also works the other way. If you need to communicate with us, please get in touch. Uh, first point of call, the tutors, uh, progress leader and pastoral leader. And obviously um, the, the, the subject teachers as well. We're just going to end the evening on a, a little video for you. Uh, and like, like I said, thank you so much for listening tonight. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. Without commitment, you'll never start, but more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. Make a choice. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. I believe hard work pays off. Keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. sometimes but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be the road to success is through commitment 
and through the strength to drive through that commitment when it gets hard.